So you pick yourself up some nice dual fans for your car's radiator. You want this thing to run as cold as possible, but you don't want these fans running at full speed all the time. Well, I'm going to show you a nice, simple, easy three relay setup so you can have a high low speed with AC integration. What's going on, ladies and gents? So here we have a crude, uh, roughly wired up version of what I'm going to show you today, which is how to construct a three relay high speed, low speed fan setup. Instead of fans, I'm using a couple of bulbs just because this table doesn't have the room for fans. So let me go through some of the wiring here with you. This black wire is my uh, ignition 12 volt switched feed, so nothing will work unless my key is on. For the sake of this test, we're just going to say the key's on because I have it hooked to power the whole time. These are my power supplies for the fans. Um, this is fan control 1 which on my schematic will be labeled left hand. This is fan control two, which on my schematic will be labeled right hand. Fan control one is low speed because it shares the power between the two fans. Fan control two switches the relays over and gives both fans a full 12 volts. So let me set you down here. Here we go, we got a good view. So these are ground triggers. So by grounding out, let me get my arm out of the way. By grounding out fan control one, let me get it in there. There we go. You can see both lights are on, but they're on dim because both fans are sharing 12 volts. We're in series right now. Let me hook this in here. There we go. So what happens is your power is coming in, coming out, going through this fan, back through this relay, and then coming back out through this fan and then to a common ground. Now, I'm gonna show you what happens when you hit fan control two. So fan control two now we will put on. See if I can get it to stay in there, yes. So now you see both lights are on full because we are running 12 volts full through both circuits separately. Now, what this is, is now power is coming into this first fan. Your mode relay has switched so now instead of power coming out of this relay and getting shared into this fan it's coming out of this wire and grounding so now this relay is 12 volts for one fan this re relay is 12 volts for the other when you're in low speed this relay does not trip at all now if you wanted to hook this up into uh air conditioning to have your fan come on when your ac does you will hook it up to the fan control 2 to the high speed now this is what happens when you do that so, you'll notice only, only one is on. There's reasoning for that. There's two ways you can do this. You can do it this way, which is nothing that's uh, bad or nothing abnormal gonna happen because when you're at the temperature for your fans to come on or you want your AC on, usually you're at your low speed fan temperature anyways. So this will be triggered by your ECM or whatever trigger you have for it. And that will automatically put both of them on. Now if you wanted to trigger both of these because you're just you just want to you can do that you can hook your trigger from your ac relay onto these but you will have to use a diode in line on both of these because if they back feed towards to each other you're going to be grounding the whole thing out like as if it was like this right now full time so even if your low speed fan kicked on your whole system is going to be grounded the other thing you need to know is that uh, factory ECMs, I don't think Hollies it matters, but factory ECMs, if they sense a ground voltage on the fan trigger when there isn't supposed to be one, they will throw a code. Now, to eliminate that, you can throw two more diodes in your high-low circuits directly out of your PCM, and that will stop any current from back feeding back into the fan circuits when the ECU is not uh, commanding them on. And it's as simple as that. So now I'm going to show you a couple of diagrams and show you the power flow so you can see it in a way that's not a jumbled mess of wires. So here's your relay schematic. This is just your basic everyday GM three relay schematic. You'll need two four pole relays and one five pole relay to make this. You can do it with three five pole relays. You just ignore the middle pole on fan one control and fan two control. 
And it's as simple as that. So if you have basic schematic knowledge, or even if you don't, I'm gonna to try to spell it out as easy as I can here so you can make this circuit and make it work. All right, so as you can see here, ignition is turned on. Power flow is going through fan control relay number one because my left-hand fan control driver in the ECM or your Holly, which will be low speed, is grounded, so that's triggering that relay on. Neither of the other two relays are going to be commanded because its trigger is not on. When that relay is triggered on, your power flow goes through the relay, through one fan, through the second relay, which defaults to that setting when it's not triggered, that's your five pole relay, and then through a splice into the other fan. So now both fans are getting 12 volts shared right here in series you can see low speed is still triggered on and high speed the temperature has come up and triggered that on now all three relays have powered on including your mode control relay has switched now from 87a to terminal 87 with the trigger of that command those commanded on you now see that it changes the direction of the fan control relay number one of the power flow gives it its own ground. So now that fan is getting a full 12 volts. Same thing with the other side. So fan control relay two is now doing something and it is giving power, full power to the right hand cooling fan motors. Now both fans are running at 12 volts at full speed. Now we have the introduction of an external ground through either a trinary switch like the one I'm showing you right now or whatever other kind of trigger you want to use whether it's pressure or electrical but this is a switch that switches when your AC comes on. You will see that in this even though you don't need a diode in this setup I've put one in there just so you know what the symbol looks like and this is triggering on your high side fans and like I said your low sides should be on if you're at any kind of an outside temperature where you're going to be using your air conditioning. Here's an example if you absolutely want to trigger both sides no matter what and you don't want to rely on a temperature based trigger for your low side fan still. Same exact as just triggering the high side but you'll see there's two diodes in here. Now in this setup you absolutely have to run the diodes because if those two circuits are not separated then you will be grounding the entire thing and running in high speed no matter what fans trigger. Also, like I told you, you would need to run a diode somewhere between your splice and the PCM terminal itself to separate power there if you wanted to uh, not cause any codes from uh, fan control issue codes or you could just tune them out like I put in the caption with whatever tuning software you want to run. So that's it. That's, that's the gist of it. That is how easy it is to run in a high-low fan setup. So that's it. That's as easy as it is to make a high-low fan setup. You just need the three relays, a little bit of knowledge on wiring. Um, don't be afraid of wiring. It's easy. Be afraid of, you know, shocking yourself, but don't be afraid of wiring. A wire is nothing more than a hose is to a, a garden moving water from one place to another. It's moving electricity from one place to another, and these dogs are not going to give me any freedom to talk yet. So you're going to have to hear them. Almost every relay out there made, all the terminals are numbered somewhere on the relay, either where the terminals are themselves inside the relay or stamped on top of the relay or on the side of the relay. Um, so as far as wiring goes, just look at the relays in the schematic I gave you and join the wires from there. If you see two wires that come together and there's a little circle, that means there's a splice there. If you see where a wire comes up to another wire and then looks like it hops over it, because it does. Those wires don't connect. It's just on a schematic. There's not enough room. So that's how they show you the circuit does not join. It just goes, you know, across that circuit in the schematic itself. And that's about it. And uh, so I know sound quality sucks. A microphone is on order. And uh, I'm going to do a few more of these. Uh, I've got some other things like fuel pump circuits. Like I said, I am going to start to get into a little bit of the tuning side and HP tuners and the stuff I know, the Gen 3 and Gen 4 LSs. Just not, not fine-tuning stuff, just, you know, you did a cam swap. I'm going to show you how to get it up and running so you can get it to a dyno or to a tuner. Or I'll give you the resources and the pages I used and the, video, the, uh, 
uh, YouTubers I use to figure out anything I didn't know and needed to learn. YouTube is an amazing source of information, so I figured I'd add a little bit to it. But that's it. That's, uh, that's all for my first really bad quality tutorial. I'm hoping they get better from here. They should. I'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, all that good stuff. See, told you I was going to remember to say that at the end of every video. See you later.